So, I mean, we need to pick up with part two of the extended cold open Moe's wedding breakdown. Oh, yeah. That will actually be the part one for people yeah. that are hearing it in the timeline wise. But I believe we have to get to. It's very confusing. The there's, DJ yeah. and the Uber driver. The DJ, the Uber driver. But there's something else we didn't talk about. I don't even think we talked about this with, with you, Maze. Zach, the karaoke night. The first karaoke, not the wedding oh, night boy. karaoke night. Uh, buckle up, everybody. This, here's where. Maze, get that drop ready for, ah, uh, yes, homophobia. <laughs> ah, not... homophobia. Uh, you want to know how you upset a mean? Accidentally Ow. take him to a gay karaoke bar. No, uh, that's yeah. not what upset me. That's not what upset me. Not what upset me at all. We're looking for karaoke. Serena says, oh, there's one right by our hotels, like right up the block. Yeah. Cool. All right, perfect. We go, we walk up. Guy takes our ID. I look at the door. The door's got the gay flag. When I mean the gay flag, I don't mean like the rainbow flag. I'm talking about the one that looks like a country that got the triangle on it too. The one that looked like it'd be an Olympic flag, right? So I'm like, Ah, you know, like <laughs> Pride Month was just a few, you know, a few weeks ago. Maybe they still haven't taken it down. Walk in, I'm like, look around, like, all right, that's a gay karaoke bar. No big deal, right? Alcohol is the same. Karaoke is the same. Let's do it. We walk up to the. I mean, willing to put his feelings about gay people aside for no, a good time. Oh, not, not feel feeling. I don't have feelings. Not feelings. <laughs> right, like a fourteen year old. <laughs> so waiting to order a drink and I look at the video monitor and these motherfuckers got a list of rules and I'm like, it's a lot of rules. So I start reading through them like, oh, this, that, whatever. And one of them is, oh, to request a song, you got to pay a dollar. Yeah, that's stupid. That's a stupid rule. I'm here I'm for like, that. I'm like, what? I'm here for that complaint. I'm like, oh, but I'm like, but still we, we were so karaoke up. We're like, cool. Let's grab our drinks. Let's go through the music list and figure out what we're going to say. So we grab our drinks. We go over here to this table in the corner. They got a QR code. Scan the QR code. Start searching through it. Search if they have Gotham City. They didn't have Gotham City. All right, cool. No problem. Like, and we can't, can't Search if they, have, Probably, if they have a mustache. If they only have a mustache. <laughs> didn't have it. He's looking so, hard for R. Kelly songs. I, what? No, that's not true. Don't no, <laughs> it's a hundred percent because you found one and you got so excited. Ignition, that is such a yes. Remix. No, that is such Ignition a yes. Remix. No Ignition remix. So, no. so I'm like, cool. All right, great. Let's, let's go ahead and put the list in. Right. All right. Go up there. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Like, I don't know where the DJ is. Where do I put my request in? And the bartender says to me, Oh, we're not taking requests anymore. And I'm like, what? But it's like, it's not even like one yet. It's like 1240. The place closes at two. You guys that got backed up that might, but you know what? It is what it is. So I go back to the table and then they're like, all right, next to the stage is Antonio. Next up on the mic is Antonio. I'm like, all right, back cool. Back the fuck up, and Antonio. Antonio start, or whatever his name is, starts singing. And I'm like, wow, this guy's really belting it. Where is he? And I'm looking around the bar. I'm looking around the bar and I'm like, I can't see him. And then I look behind the bar. He's one of the bartenders. I'm like, hey, bro, two things. One, you're telling me I can't sing because you who works here is singing? That's kind of ridiculous. But two, you want to make some drinks, my friend. You want to actually be a bartender while all these people are waiting for drinks? There were no? three bar there were three bartenders working, just so you know. Does not matter, wizard. Everyone was drinked up and happy? No. I now think I everyone was drinked up and happy except for nope, you. No, 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 no. So Antonio finishes. Next up, Teresa. Teresa on the mic. I'm like, okay, where's Teresa at? It's the other bartender. The other bartender. The bartenders are singing. We can't take requests from our patrons who come here to pay money to sing songs to pay money for the alcohol because our employees are too busy. I felt like Taffer. I mean, El Taffer I, was exploding I in his head. went nuts. And I said, either you fix this or I walk. And I got up and I walked and I waited for fucking Phil Wills over here and Mia Mastrioni to walk out behind me. What do they do? <laughs> Take their sweet we time. We had drinks. Out. 
I'm in the we lobby. We were drinking for drinks. Thirty minutes at least. Not thirty minutes. <laughs> thirty minutes, <laughs> maybe six. At least. He sends I'm us like, a video, Ooh. like, "What are you doing? We gotta go." So I sent a video going, Ooh, and then Serena sent a video going, Ooh, and like drinking a drink. Oh, like see, it was. I didn't. I didn't see those videos. I think I saw yours. I didn't. See, I didn't even see Serena. Yeah. All right. Play big. I was like, all right. So they walk out, and I'm like, this is ridiculous. And oh, that's when Zach reveals that while that's how I know it was in six minutes. You said some dude, one of the patrons, yeah. sang like three songs in a row. He sang two songs in a row, and we Same left during shit. the second song, which was about six minutes after you walk, walked out. Mm, no. Yeah, so yes. We it's no. no mm, 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 mm. Mm. Who's to say? So we walk I out. Am. We walk out. We find another karaoke spot. It's a rooftop place. Get in there. Walked up to the DJ. I said, yo, are there any weird rules? He's like, no, I just sign up. And he's got like a little thing. And I was like, what's the list? He's like, whatever you want. If I can't find it, I'll pull it on YouTube. I'm like, that's how you karaoke. And so when my turn came up, which was about two or three people in, by the way, it wasn't even that long of a wait. I took the opportunity to praise the DJ, praise the establishment, and talk shit. <laughs> like he some did, of these. I he, did this, also, this, he did also complain that. They had already had last call by the time we got there. I didn't complain on the mic about that. No, but you did complain to I us. Complained that, I complained that to you. But I also finagled two beers, so. Yeah. You, you're welcome. Well, I, no, I don't, nice I don't budget. really like beer, so that's not a. Didn't help then why'd you make me buy you a beer? I didn't make you buy me anything. You brought me a beer. I had no idea what you were doing. You just brought me a beer. You said, here, here's a beer. I'm like, okay. Broad. All right, so. <laughs> I uh I I take the opportunity to like to shug night the goddamn other karaoke spot. But hey, if you tired of these other karaoke spots with the bartenders all did. up on the mic? <laughs> he also uh, there was one point he won't admit this, but there's one point where he caught himself and made sure not to bash that it was a gay karaoke club because that's irrelevant. That's right, irrelevant almost said, but I saw you almost say it and then you caught yourself. Yes, see no, again th this, this <laughs> Zach fiction, Zach no. fiction. No. At it again. So, all right. Fast forward to wedding night. We go to the wedding, as I said on the episode that airs months from now. Yeah. The wedding was beautiful. <laughs> the the food was incredible. It's amazing. Yeah. What a night. All right. DJ comes on. We're all on the dance floor. Everyone's ready. Everyone's been waiting for this. There's a guy at another table who's kind of been like. I told him about this today. I told oh, he, does, he didn't <laughs> yeah. know? He didn't. He didn't know about. It. Nobody knew that you. Nobody except you and I knew that you were in competition with this other guy. Oh no, there was a big rivalry. Big rivalry between tables. There's a guy at the other table. You know, I had already like staked the claim. That I'm going to be the life of the party, and here comes this guy showboating his ass off. <laughs> he turns out to be a really nice guy, by the way. He's the best. Oh, far. <laughs> yeah. was great. Man. He was awesome. Was awesome. Yeah. We, became, we all became friends afterwards. But like at that yeah. moment, like who is this guy? What you might no, say? Man, like, and literally, he's a respectful villain. And, and, yeah. and literally. All this guy did, I mean, it's like, oh, who the fuck is this guy? Who's this guy thinking? All this guy did was have a good time at a wedding. That's all he no, was he doing was, with his friends. How dare he? he <laughs> Celebrating he was, his he was, friend's marriage. He was, he was, he was stealing my thunder, man. So, so, but like, it's kind of that, that stage where the DJ's playing some songs, but then they stop because someone's got to do a speech or something is happening or whatever. So finally, like, all right, guys, here it goes. We're all on the dance floor. Now Let's it's dance go. time the rest of the night. Yeah. Dance time the rest of the night. DJ starts playing music. And, like, he'll play, like, a good song, and then he'll play, like, like nobody knows this shit. And then he'll play a good song, and then, and then at some point he just starts playing just the type of new songs that nobody really but knows. But also, like, he would, he would play, he would start to play a good song. Yep. And and, then but then it. it was a, but uh, cut it, or it turns out to be, like, a remix version that isn't any good. Like, a so we get, like, remixing. a little bit, and we're starting to get into the song. It's like, oh, shit, here we go. And then it's like, boom. It takes a left turn into a song that no one gave a fuck about. There's this girl on, on Instagram, probably also on TikTok, where she does like white people versions of popular songs. So it'll be like, I want to dance with somebody. I want to feel the heat, 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 he
every, she, she, she does an amazing job. Every song she does it, inserts she, an EDM singer. drop into every yeah. classic track. But it's always it always how it starts. It's like it's yeah. like Billy Jean is not my lover. She's just a girl who thinks that I am the one, 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 one. <laughs> and then like so it was a lot of shit like that. So finally, I tell Mo, Mo, just tell him to play like. Just play the play, hits, man. Play, play, the, play the good hits, shit. Yeah. Play the hits. And Mo looks at me and like, you could tell him if you want, which I should have known. Mo's like, like Mo I'm was not going to tell him that. I'm not going to say anything. So I walk up to the guy and say, hey, my man, there's nobody here younger than 35 years old. S stick, to, stick to 90s, early 2000s, maybe some 80s. You're going to have these people eating out the palm of your hand. And he's like, all right, man, good deal. I'm like, thank you. I walk away. I swear to God, before I get back to Zach, the small market place, do, 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 do. Not, they're not like us. They're like, I'm yeah. like, you mother. <laughs> so then continues this trend of like, he'll play a song. Everyone's on the dance floor, clearly having the time of their life. And then he'll play some other shit. And everyone will either leave or just stop and stand still and start talking. And so at some point, I literally just bellow out in this silent moment. <laughs> Read the room. <laughs> Zach, tell me on the other day on the rewind, he said, he didn't hear you. I'm like, there's no chance he didn't hear me. Everybody <laughs> in the room turned around. Mo shushed me. And Zach's like, no, he didn't hear you. Because why, Zach? Because he was singing along to his own songs. <laughs> <laughs> it <laughs> headphones on, he's just singing to, <laughs> singing to the songs. Like, he was singing into the microphone at times. Oh, that was the shit that, <laughs> that really set me off. At one point, this is right before I told him, man, just stick to the hits, man. And nobody here is young. Uh, he played the hock to a girl. Play like the, the remix. Som yeah. Sometimes you gotta just hock to her on that thing, and then some song that remix that. And I'm like, bro, yo, there's aunties and grandmothers here, bro. What are you doing? This is a wedding. The fuck are you doing? What do you think you cool right now? Like that's also that's it wasn't, it wasn't it. a good song either. Like it just wasn't good. Like whether it was appropriate or not, it just wasn't good. Also, you want to know what's dated? Fucking the opening and the running hawk to a joke in Law Abiding Citizen episode part oh, one. Oh my god! Oh my yeah. god! I'm, I was I was just like, oh, gosh, great moments in meme history this? that are. I fucking tired. hate it. I hate a this episode. Just because the episode's great, except for those moments. That's why we got to create our own memes to start. All right, so the shit ends. I say, hey, let's go karaoke, Mo. I'm sorry, Bo, to put you out there like this. Mo completely tries to throw cold water on her, like. I don't think well, we were telling throughout the go. night. We were telling throughout yeah, the he's night. Like, like we're he's like, yeah. yeah, I don't know. He's doing the like the yawn and stretch, and then finally he does the 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 little kid thing when you don't want to do something. You say, "Well, go ask my mom." Basically, like go ask. So he's uh, so he says, "Go ask Jamie if she wants to go." And I said, "Jamie, hey, we're, we're thinking about going to karaoke." And she's like, "Yeah, that's great. Let's do it." And I said, "Mo, Jamie's in." And he's like, "Fuck." All right, so <laughs> now we've got a big group, twelve people, Zach, something like that. at least at least twelve people. At 12 and us. And I'm trying to kind of, you know, you don't want anyone to lose steam and be like, yeah, on second thought. No, you got to get mind. people's in, in Ubers. That's what you got to yeah, get. So we're out there. Who's, you got an Uber. You got an Uber. Okay, I'm getting an Uber. I'll get an Uber XL. I can take five with me. Me, Zach, uh, and like whoever else. We, we can take four more. Mo, with Jamie, some, and somebody. Like we were going to take Mo. We were going to make sure Mo and Jamie got there. Right. So order Uber XL. Uber XL is an SUV. Pulls up. Open the door. Driver says, how many you guys got with you? You're like, oh, about like five or six. He's like, no, nah, I'm sorry. I, I only take up to three. And so I think it was Mo and Jamie like, oh, okay. They kept moving. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa wait a second, man. But, but I ordered an Uber XL. He's like, yeah, yeah, but I only take up to three. I'm like, then why didn't you like, why did you identify as an Uber XL? He's like, it's identify. okay. I'm canceling the ride. Can canceling the ride. I'm like, cancel the ride. Now, to put it in perspective, the resort where the, uh, the the thing was, it's like up on a mountain. It's not like down a main thoroughfare where there's just Ubers everywhere. So it, it took it takes about like 12 to 15 minutes for an Uber yeah, to get there. Easily, yeah. So I'm like, yo, you haven't done me any favors by canceling this. Like, we could have easily been like, I would have been annoyed, but I'm like, all right, well, we'll take three here and then we'll call another one, right? Instead... You have just unilaterally fucked me, basically. He's like, yeah, but you're not getting charged. Like, I don't care about the charge. I care about 
having to wait again for an Uber. And then I said to him, I said, buddy, why were you an Uber XL then? They go, oh, I, I'm, I, I'm Uber XL, but I don't take up to three. I'm not Uber XL because I got an SUV. Like, but you want to take three people? Like, yeah. Then you shouldn't be an Uber XL. You could be Uber X. You could be Uber Black. You could be Uber Comfort. Hell, you could even be Uber uh, disabled or whatever. Right? <laughs> you can't be an Uber XL if you say, because it says right here, take up to six people. So you, you can't do this. You have, do you have a third row? I was like, yes. Like, then what? So now I'm just having this argument with him while everyone else has now ridden their Ubers. We're already waiting uh, yeah, for the next. I, I put Mo and Jamie in a different Uber that had come. I was like, you go with them, whatever. And now it's just me and Amin waiting for my Uber that I've called to get there while Amin argues with this Uber driver. I'm, I, and, and so <laughs> he just keeps going round and round about like, well, I only take up to three people. Well, I'm like, well, but you need to da 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 and, and like, hey, I have other calls. Can can I go? Like, no, no, you can't go. I'm hanging in front of his passenger he, window. He's literally in the passenger window just leaning. Like, Why this guy good. stayed there? This guy should have just driven away. It's fucking yeah, insane I, that he just, he entertained any of this. He just sat there and finally he's like, you know what, man? I was wrong for that. And I'm like, that's all I wanted from you. Now nah, you can go. So I got up out the window. He drives off. They've got these rocking chairs up front. So me and Zach sitting in the rocking chairs are waiting for the Uber. And so like, I was sitting there. I was just like complaining, vending this Zach. Then I was like, oh, let me check my phone for something. Fuck. Tap the packet. Tap the, tap the pockets. Tap my, over here. Where the fuck is my phone? Shit, where's my phone? I look in the ground. It's not on the ground. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Tell me I didn't fucking drop the phone. Inside in the Uber. this dude's car while I was leaning in the window. He's like, I, I need back. your phone. He's like, I need your phone right now. Well, I, 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 that's not what I said. <laughs> yes, you did. I need your phone right now. I, I, that's not what I said. I was like, ah, oh, shit, man. Because all I'm thinking about is this dude finding my phone as he's driving down the mountain. Look at that fucking, shit in the ocean. Fucking that shit <laughs> off a cliff. <laughs> I'm like, ah, oh, shit. Let me do the find my iPhone thing so I can like locate it. And then before I had to find my, well, let me let me call it first. And I called, and it's like, oh shit! It was it was like in the crevice of the rock. It like chair. slipped into like the bottom rung of the of the chair. Dude, I was scared as shit. I was, I was hoping like, that his phone was in that car and that the guy was gonna drive back and just like dangle it, just like do laps then, around the, just do like circles around. The epilogue to this entire story is Zach. I didn't even realize this, but Zach told me this the other day. There's a guy who's outside also waiting for a valet or waiting for a car. He's like, hey, you guys waiting for a car? And we're like, it, yeah. I was like, yeah. And he's like, cool. Like, all right, big gulps, huh? Basically, <laughs> I found out days later that that was, in fact, the wedding DJ. It was the DJ. Just <laughs> all gangly, movie. nerdy dude. <laughs> Who did you, who are you more upset with, <coughs> DJ or Uber driver? Fuck man, that's that. Or tough. karaoke bar, the or the karaoke night. bar. Oh wow, that's a three way tie. Or the or the pizza place that had neither pizza nor water. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that's in the other. Episode. What was what was the in the CT five? What was the number? I could one? tell I you think... what I what based on what I endured from each mm -hmm. episode. I could tell you what I I want to know what Amin's ranking is in terms of. Yeah. Being upset, and then I'll tell you what was, it actually is. I was pretty upset with all three. That's the fuck I'm, like, I'm, I'm not, I was going to say Zach is going to say I wasn't that mad. I was mad at all three. No, he was he was furious at all. Because I at one yeah. point in the Uber to the karaoke spot, after we had I settled, after you found your phone or whatever, you kept yeah. talking about it. And, I, and yeah. I was just like, why are you this upset? <laughs> like, just let it go. Yeah. No. Like, no, it's a principle. The whole t it's a principle. It's a principle. It is the it's a principle. Yeah, but it's, it's done. Um... I was most upset. I would say the karaoke guy is number three because there were moments of joy. The, excuse me, not the karaoke, uh, the DJ, the wedding DJ was number three because there mm -hmm. were moments of, of joy within it. Also, that's <sighs> typical there, DJ there behavior. Were, yeah, and there were yeah. enough good pockets of dance yeah. and music and everything. It just wasn't yeah. consistent. Oh, the best part was the, he plays Whitney Houston, I want to dance with somebody. And I turned to Mo and I said, you're welcome. And Mo, the next day, told me, he's like, no, that was like the sign. We told him the last song of the night. When it gets to the last song of the night, just play that. And we'll yeah. know it's the last song. And I was but, <laughs> but in the moment, I, to, I told Mo, yeah, I was like, you're like, I saved this shit. I, I said, dude, I, said, I saved your shit. I do this. Uh, so he's number three. 
Uh, karaoke. Uh, karaoke versus the Uber driver. I'm going to go with I'm going to go with karaoke number as number two, 1 and as number 2. Oh. And here's why. And this is going to lead us right into the CT5 that we're going to do. I guess this is I don't know if this is a cold open or not. Oh, it's um, frigid. It's frozen. I mean, okay. Jesus Christ, we're 20 in. <laughs> we're, this is, all about? told, we've done 40 minutes of cold open about Hawaii. Okay. So <laughs> number two is the karaoke bar because the karaoke bar did not do anything other than business as usual for them. I can criticize how they do business, but it's their prerogative to charge a dollar for a thing. It's their prerogative to have their bartenders singing instead of bartending. It's their prerogative to allow patrons to sing back-to-back -back songs and all that stuff. They can do all that. I'm the interloper in that in that case. I went to their bar, right? You can't be an Uber XL and say, I only take three people. There are established rules to this shit, not made by me, not made by you, made by the fucking company that you, that you work for. Right, that you're contracted by. I know some nerd. Like, oh, actually, man, they're not employees. Whatever the fuck, you get paid through them. They got the rules. You can't do that shit, man. You can't just unilaterally decide, yo, I'm, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna get the higher rate because that's Uber XL is more expensive than Uber X. So he's basically saying, I'm gonna get the higher rate, but I'm never going to ever inconvenience myself with the, you know, with the actual doing of the job. So he's by far number one on the shit list. I know. Yeah, Zach it's hundred percent. The gay me. karaoke bar is number one. Yeah. A hundred percent. You're a homophobe. That's why, Zach. I had no uh, problem being there. Homophobia. This idea is just straight up bad. That algorithm is busted. It's among the worst ideas I've ever heard. Top five, easy. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Welcome to Cinephobe Top 5. This is the companion podcast to the Top 10 in the Nation TV Film Review Podcast. Cinephobe, if you haven't listened to Cinephobe before, go listen to it. Go look for a movie you've seen before. Listen to the episode, and then you get an idea of like, oh, these guys do it like this. And then as you listen to it, you're going to realize we make a lot of references. We reference a lot of things. We talk about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. We sometimes rank things within the episodes, and that's how the genesis of CT5, CT5 Top 5, came about. What was that word? <laughs> <laughs> OT Genesis. <laughs> so maze, look up. Zach was prepared to let bacon it slide. Bacon soda. I got bacon soda. Hey, soda. So as, I, soda. <laughs> Showed up. CT5. Mezcal, got, you say? Yeah. <laughs> i got to listen to that one. Can't wait to In listen to that. a month and a half, whatever the no, fuck that right. goes out. God damn so, it. So, <laughs> we've done top five lists like vehicles, like weapons, like deaths, names, songs. Yo, Maze, you posted that. You reposted that uh, Sharon Stone death. Oh, my Cat God. Yeah, somebody said fuck, that to I, me today. I forgot the tumbling when she starts falling. Dude, we, we, we talked about it the other day in an episode where somebody died. Yeah. And I said, oh, it's like Sharon Stone. Like, no, said, fuck, that's funny, not. man. <laughs> not, not as much tumbling. So this week, we're doing something that Zach came up with called Respectful Villains. Zach, what is a respectful villain? It's a villain that's nice. It's a villain that's just a, about their business. It's a villain that doesn't overextend themselves to be evil, to be rude. They're just doing their, they're doing what they do, but there's an adversary against it. And we've decided through the movie that they're the villain and we got to support the bad guy. But I like a respectful villain, someone who's just trying to live. I think I speak for Maze here when I say it would have been nice to get that definition before we made these lists. Uh, this because... is why this is, uh, look, I wrote uh, down no, on my I, list, nicest villains. I, like, I don't... It's, it's wherever you want to go with it. It's always up for interpretation, and I think misinterpreting the assignment is part of this podcast at this point. Also, also you didn't ask. Also, there is. It was from a listener uh, who was in the chat during the rewatchington that proposed this. I can't not remember oh. which person it was, but they threw that out you. there as we were doing the "A Million Ways to Die in the West" rewatchington, and Zach stunningly pounced on it. Leapt. At the opportunity to talk about respect. 
<laughs> one of his paramount. Respect's the most important thing in the world. Respect's the name of the game. Yeah. All right, so here's the order. Zach goes first, I go second. Maze brings up the caboose. All right, so OLI number oh, yeah. one. Oh, that's right. We do two outside looking ins, and we do our top five. Sorry, forgot to mention that. Part. This person is a high-powered executive. This person is trying to manage new things. This person is trying to find ways to bring company together. Also, this person, like, you know, they have friends. They have, you know, past experiences they, that they respect, and they want to, you know, do again. They want to rekindle. And so I have no problem with this villain, quote-unquote, to me more disclosure. I have no problem with her wanting to fuck Michael Douglas. <laughs> you had Demi Moore as the as the it's villain. Little, you said. It, well, because if you're like the movie had her as the villain. Yeah. I don't have her as the villain. But if we're gonna go by the movie, I think she's very respectful. I think she's Who do you like have as a she's villain, trying, man? Oh, Michael Douglas is the villain. That guy, I mean, that guy is unhinged. Is she, is she respectful Close. when she sends him messages? Is your cock hard now? Is that She's respectful? Asking if he's ready. Uh, I you wish find, I look. was respected in that way. Yeah. <laughs> you get you get you get that text message from a hot interest from the past, and, and you okay. be like, "Ooh, that's disrespectful." Fuck out of here. To me, more sweetheart. Uh, so I didn't have the same type of list that Zach had. I had oh. a very. So it makes for the best CT5. Yeah. Uh, I had you like pick plot basically, lift outs this time? No, I, I I I don't know what that's referring to. Uh I I had basically villains who were like, yo, kind of like my villains during Mo Wedding mm -hmm. Weekend. It's like, were you just doing you and I interloped on your world and now I'm declaring you a villain, which is kind of like that's well. That's the, what. That's how we're doing like the Demi Moore. Yeah, yeah. That's a little bit like Demi Moore. She was. I mean, like he was just minding her business and trying to suck a dick. And next thing you know, Michael Douglas is making a big deal about it. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe he is a villain. Now that I think about it, you said no, yeah. Demi Moore. Anyways, uh, <clears throat> so similarly, my villain is clearly the villain of the movie. I'm not trying to be cute here. Everyone knows that this is the 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 main antagonist. Never says a word, like, crossly, anything that could be said disrespectfully to the protagonist. Mm -hmm. Just going about my day. And what do protagonists do? They say, they got to shove something up my ass and blow me up. It's the asteroid from Armageddon. <laughs> Just existing. Just existing. <laughs> it's a great pick. Surprise, not higher. It's a great pick. The yeah, asteroid did nothing wrong. Realist. It's a great list. It's a great list. You're is in the way. Is it respectful though? You know, is it res like if it was respectful, maybe it would have changed its course. How can it do that? It's an asteroid. I would if I could. They go That's where they what go. The asteroid said yeah. if it could speak, but it didn't mm -hmm. speak because it didn't want to be disrespectful. Mm -hmm. no, I like it. I like the pick. It could have said. It could have said, "I'm trying, bitch," but you guys are yeah. kind of fattening oh. my way. No, it's, I'm going. I'm still going to go this way. Anymore. Yeah, yeah he, uh... he slipped that one out. Dude, <laughs> how that happened? Dude, how many? How many weeks? I've, I've been. I how many weeks? Great... How, how many, many this many time? Weeks? He did it. Oh, uh, he was. He was flawless in Hawaii. Yeah, with the broad thing. Yep. Now, he said broad a lot. He called what everybody. Said, everybody <laughs> in both cold opens got many broads attributed to their name. My OLI, it's kind of confusing. I mean, they are, they're, they're probably the villains of this movie, even though they are mm, the heroes by the, the heroes, the main characters. And they? Modern day Robin Hoods. They're classy. They're well-dressed. No, don't do this. They God share the wealth it. of their takes by running a bar <laughs> and giving back to the community. It's Hayden Christensen to the Takers crew. I hear the drink specials are phenomenal. Great they drink let, program. They don't sing karaoke at their own bar. They let other people <laughs> no, sing don't. karaoke. Their bartenders actually work, Zach. Where other than T.I.? I don't see anybody get They're a fucking downstairs. drink in that place. They're downstairs. All they of them are the, upstairs. No, the bartenders, the people who are working are downstairs. They make Zoe Saldana work. She works really hard. Yes, <laughs> she does. She, she runs the bar by herself. And... I guess they screwed over T.I. and that's why he's salty, but he's he's the least yes. respectful of the crew because he's yeah. double-crossing them. 
I mean, Paul Walker's not very respectful. He's walking into a pool, butt ass naked. That's very respectful. What are you talking about? To, how is he supposed to walk? With your clothes on? With your dirty outside clothes on? He's respectfully having a threesome in the pool. What, what's not respectful about Idrisa that? Idrisa shoots the moon. What's respectful about that? It's not respectful well, to tides. He does it for his uh, drug addicted sister. He's, and also, he's not actually he's not actually <laughs> shooting the moon. He's just he would really, be good. Well, he's showing you how high his aspirations are for respect. Yeah, <laughs> it's like that. I'm trying, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my next OLI. I am not condoning this behavior in the nope. slightest. Okay, there we go. That, that I need he's that. Condoning it. It's a great I need disclaimer. that. Explicitly if calling, clear. If you're calling the, res- the <laughs> behavior respectful, that means here's you the res- are here. No, 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 no. Here's where it is respectful. I still think it's wrong, no matter what. But if you are going to lust after a bingo, waiting oh. until their training has made them a higher cognitive level yes. before you fuck them. Oh, the horny lady and lawnmower man. Zach. Who does eventually have sex with Joe? She didn't know. She knew. Everyone knew. She, she no. I'm talking about. She didn't know that he'd been gotten better. Oh, she knew. That's a deleted scene, was, probably. No, she was just throwing no. it at the bingo. No, the bingo. Who mows no, lawns? don't do that to her. <laughs> I'm sensing a, a strange trend. <clears throat> On Zach's list so far, I, uh, I, don't, I don't like it. Thing, if they There's throw you no, a bone, just, no, we're gonna go. No, we're gonna go different ways. We're gonna go different CD5, ways. CD five disrespectful <laughs> villains, Zach Harper, on this list. All right, my my other outside looking in or OLI, and I have to admit it's a little prisoner of the moment, guys. It's 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 a recent episode, and I you know you guys know I get swayed by this, but. If someone were to kill your entire family, like, can we really, really hold you accountable and call you disrespectful for wanting exact revenge on the people who did it? It's Jaws from Jaws of Revenge. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Didn't make my list, but wrote, wrote it down. No, okay. I mean, look, my list is my list. I, can, I don't know what to tell you, but yes, Absolutely. Isn't it like Lady Jaws? What, what did we decide? It's like Jaws's mom. Or- one, you guys said it was like some kind of voodoo shit happening at one point. Well, I don't well, know. Yeah, what that was, 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 that that was, was cut deleted, out. Yeah. Yeah. That was the, uh, the, uh, the director's cut or whatever. <clears throat> okay. My next OLI. Really, if you look at it objectively, this person's a freedom fighter in an oppressive government. He loves his people. He throws block parties and parades. He loves birds. He loves (laughs) basketball. No, I'm not forgetting this dude, man. Cuervo Jones from Escape from LA. (laughs) Dude, I swear to God, man, this might be the third time we've had Cuervo Jones on a CT5 list. And every time I'm like, fuck, I forgot about him, man. Here's a quote from Cuervo. This is the real LA. People without hope, without a country. You know what they want? Liberation. They want respect. They don't That's get respectful. It. That's why I'm here. I'm Cuervo yeah. Jones. Cares about respect. I get it. All right. My number five. <clears throat> we get into the list, into the nitty gritty. This guy did some, I think, all right. He did some disrespectful things. I can't deny that, right? You guys are going to attack me for who I'm including here. He did some disrespectful things. But ultimately, this guy was a mentor. This guy was a businessman. This guy was a visionary. And you know what? He's got a lot of laws. Coughlin's Law. Cocktail. Yeah. He was just trying to build businesses. He's trying to reinvent the industry. Yep. The cutting room floor for me. Definitely Coughlin was trying to do something. He was trying, trying to, to, to get under his wing. Exactly. Fuck exactly. Yeah. He was trying to teach him life Sean. lessons. That's, Pretty disrespectful. Look, look, then don't tickle her as you're fucking moving bed and she won't stray. How about that? Okay. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Remember that? Don't Chris right. tickles her. Off the yeah. bed. That's weird. Top that's, five. That's weird. Here we go. Num- <laughs> number five. Number five for me is actually it's a two movies, but same villain. Oh. Same villain in both movies. And no, it's not Taken Two and Taken Three. Oh. <laughs> because if you'll remember, the villain in Taken Two is not the same villain in Taken Three. Remember, no, it's not. was it uh uh 
Who, which which reviewer was really upset by that? Oh, it was Tony Medley. He was upset yeah. that like the the villains in three were not the same. We're not Albanians. Yeah, we're not Albanians, right? All right. <clears throat> so, question for you guys: Is exploitation good? No. Is slave labor good? No. no. Right. So, <clears throat> fighting against those things, pretty respectful, right? Don't tap for this thing. But. <laughs> I just, just saying, like that's something that a respectful villain would do. Would be to fight against these negative ills of society. Of course. And so, my CT five number five respectful villain is the system in Johnny B. Good and Blue Tips that wants wow. these college athletes to play for free. Wow. These so guys, the system just wants to pay them. Is that the NCAA or the, uh, the is that no, the no, kind no. of the, both no, 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 or no, no. just the, the system? The, booster, the boosters, the system, the system, like the, the system that pays players, basically. Happy and the shoe companies and everybody, you know, there's a lot of different kind of stakeholders in, in Johnny B. Good. Blue Chips, they kind of focus it on happy. Yeah. But it's all the system. Maze, I hate to interrupt you here. Oh. But number four on my list. Happy from Blue Chips. Oh. This dude was just trying to bring winning to Western University. Yep. And time proved him right in a lot of ways. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. And everyone in Johnny B. Good as well. Aged like yep. wine. My Adidas, number five. Big NIL place now. This is a primary antagonist for the movie, but... He's so respectful that by the end of the movie, he and the hero see an eye to eye on a lot of things. And they they even team up and unite against the real villain, the disrespectful villain, Michael Buffer. I'm talking about the man who wants to open his own oh. chewy mukintukin restaurant. It's Phantom. Yeah. Yeah. Don't mess with the Zohan. Also on my OLI, cutting the mama cut room floor, man. Phantom for sure. Brought together uh, by Zohan banging his sister. I love Mariah Carey, and he's scared of bees. Respectful. I forgot. No, of, I, I forgot Michael bees. Buffer was in the. He said. He <laughs> said there there is a bee, and he was trying to alert everybody else. Yeah, Michael Michael Buffer is the evil. I forgot. I magnate, really forgot about Michael. Real yeah. estate bad guy. <laughs> yeah. Number four for me. You know, sometimes the villain doesn't present as a villain. You guys watch the villain, like, mm -hmm. you know, it's like the devil. Sometimes the devil does not appear with horns and a pointy tail. The devil appears as a very beautiful person. And you're like, you know what? I'm listening. Why? You know what? You have mm -hmm. a good point. I can't believe yeah. that's how villains sometimes seduce us, right? They seduce us. Make some villains does not make them disrespectful, though, because who doesn't like to be seduced? It really preys upon the thing that we all like. We like to be seduced. And sometimes we are seduced. And sometimes after the seduction, there's a whole switch up. <clears throat> there's a switch up and there's a um, kind of a different approach to everything, a nitpicking of everything. You're like, wait, what happened? I thought we were, thought we were great. And next thing you know, they're sitting in their ivory tower orchestrating hits on people by thugs. It's Jennifer Aniston in the breakup. <laughs> not She's the a villain. villain. You're a misogynist. She's the villain. She's the She's villain. out of your mind. At all. I'm a misogynist. Zach had two women on his list. I only have one. We're not even done with the list. They're about OLIs though. Yeah, and also Zach put them on there because they were horny. <laughs> oh, horny. Yeah, wow. no, horny. You have to beat it. So, so one of those. Wait, to be clear, to be clear. Uh, horny women, woman is a villain, huh? Like that's well, what we're doing. No, these two just happen to be we're villains. Slut shaming. They were, we're slut no. shaming. Okay, no, you're just well, shaming I dis women. I disagree no. that she's the villain, but she's not what, a villain. how is she respectful? Well, I think she tried to make it work. She did. She tried to meet him halfway. Hundred percent. She did, but she also orchestrated a hit. It, okay. A hit happened. She didn't orchestrate it. Or, she knew what she was doing in her. If he doesn't tower. grab the pitch pipe, look. All I gotta say is <laughs> when he's in a very I, funky groove. All I gotta say is I'm glad she's not in charge of all the clocks in Chicago. Then I'll leave it at that. Major number four. I hate this villain. 
it originally Damn. made my list for when, when we did villains. It made my list as one of the worst villains, which I guess will be a different CT5 at a different time. I hate this villain, but God oh, damn it, he's respectful. Idea. Okay? This villain has respect for fair fights. Every six years, he shows up to fight someone, and then he plants his sword in the ground, he kneels, and he bows his head before a fight. It's an enormous honor to be chosen by him. It's Brax from Jiu-Jitsu. <laughs> That's a great call. That's a great I hate call. Him. He sucks. Super respectful. So respectful. Yeah. I, I don't remember that movie enough to hate him. We need to do a rewatchington for jujitsu. That was that was what I determined by going through my notes today. Movie's yeah. insane. Brax is insane. We need to do a rewatchington. We don't remember it. I definitely don't remember that movie. No. I know it takes a <laughs> while for Nick Cage to show up. Yeah. We were yeah. desperately I remember a POV <laughs> shot. I remember uh, every fight fake, scene was a POV shot. A fake wannabe John claude Van Damme is the main guy. Oh my god, yeah. <clears throat> All right, my number three. Um, let me say that, like, if you were someone uh, who had like big aspirations as a as a teenager, as a college, uh, you know, someone who attends college, you you know, someday you'd like to make it, right? You'd like to be a star. You had these aspirations, but you. Things happen, keep you from doing it, right? You're struggling, struggling with money. You can't make ends meet, you know, working these shitty jobs you don't love. It's not what you what you sought out to do. And you don't have problems like, you know, picking up women or whatever. But if there's someone out there who wants to make you a star, who wants to make you money, who wants to make you fuck their wife, it's Al Pacino and two for the money. One of the most respectful villains out there. That's a good one. That how tiny little he, Italian Godzilla? Are you kidding me? How is he the villain? Well, they make him the villain in the movie of like, oh, Who's, he, you know, oh, he he set them up for failure and he gambled uh-huh. all the money away and he put them in a bad position and okay. oh, he he turned on uh, John Anthony and all that bullshit. No, fuck that. He tried to do nothing but make him a star, make him rich, and make him sexually satisfied by yeah. Rene Russo. Mm-hmm. Maze, yeah. who do you have as the villain of that movie if it's not him? I'm t- I was trying to think about it. I mean, Armand Asante. Yeah, it's Armand Asante, right? Because he like he's barely in it. But that's not respectful because he, he pees on him. The shit he literally pees somebody on him. pees on him. Yeah, that's yeah, not that, respectful. That, that, <laughs> but I, hell of an argument. <laughs> as I thought about it, I, I peed on him. He can't do that. That's, yeah. <laughs> some some All cultures, right. that's a sign of respect. You never know. <laughs> it is. Maybe I thought he was stunned by a jellyfish. Oh. Or two hundred dollars, uh-huh. over two hundred dollars. All right, all right. Uh, Oxford Dictionary defines oh, respectful oh, wow. as feeling or showing deference and respect. Mm. Right. My number three is a villain who, throughout the entirety of the movie, showed deference and respect to the protagonist. The like from from the moment they discovered who the protagonist was, all the way through literally trying to kill him, the respect level was never lost. He tried to engage him in some chit-chat. Oh. He told him to take it easy. <laughs> I believe in Spanish it's respetuosa or respetuoso. It's respectful. Antonio Banderas in Assassins. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. There is there is the code of assassin honor. He he's admires. Him, even, he admi- he's like, yo, Stallone. you're the guy. You're the guy. I was like, I built my whole career trying to reach your level. That's as respectful as you can get, I think. Yep. He, he studied the history and the tape. That's a good one. I like that. He does kind of. I guess, I mean, he doesn't really do it. Like none of his assassination attempts are really disrespectful. It's all, it's all fair play. Now he does call Julianne Moore a sick little bitch. Correct. But she is also spying on her neighbors. So justified. She is kind of a sick little broad. Yeah. She's sick little broad. There you go. He should (laughs) have called her a broad. Absolutely. But that was before the decree. That was well before the decree. So you're good. You're good. All right. 
Maze, number three. My number three, thought of this while we were doing the recording. Had to bump him up to three on the fly. Wow. Oh. Extremely respectful. <clears throat> I think that's entirely evident. The villainy is less clear, but his act of villainy does sort of serve as plot liftoff for the movie as well. He breaks up a new marriage so respectfully. He oh. even drives Luben to the airport the on his scooter after the conflict. It's Cloud from Along Came Polly. Yeah. I would I would quibble with whether or not he's a villain, but you're not right. Villain, I mean, he, he, but the respect but, is through the roof. By the end, him and and Luben are, are they're boys. They're good yeah, friends. they they yeah. make up. Come out kinda for like, some scuba. Kind of like me and, and the guy from the next table <laughs> <laughs> on the wedding. Far out. All right, my number two. Mm -hmm. All this guy wants to do is raise a child, right? Raise a child. He's got to deal with fucking hillbilly. This guy who doesn't know how to dress at a funeral. Doesn't know how to dress anywhere that he goes. Yeah. Breaking yeah. and entering. Even tries to make deals with this guy. Right, just walk away. Mm -hmm. Here's a check. Yeah. Walk away. It's Grandpa Logia from over the top. <laughs> <laughs> he knows. You know why he's trying to do this? Because all Sly Stone ever did was write letters with what that mouth do. And lie to his son about how many fucking letters he would send. To check up on the kid. No, he was just sexting through letters. Grandpa Logia knew this shit. <laughs> knew this shit. It's like this dumbass who's in a truck all the time, okay. all over the okay, country, okay. can't be a father, can't be a proper role model, Yeah. can't provide consistently, who's just out there in fucking truck stops, arm wrestling people and setting your son up to like get beat up by... My kids at a fucking pinball machine. <laughs> no, you can't take care of my grandson. I'm going to raise this kid. Put him fucking military academy. Teach him lessons. Teach him uh, work ethic. Teach him responsibility. Teach no. Him respect. I'm going to steal him. It's kidnapping. Yeah. I mean, he sounds like the hero. Honestly, Grandpa Lucia. Yeah, even tries to, like, literally tries to make a, a deal. Like, please just go away. Here's the money. Go leave away. My, I'm taking care of your leave kid. Leave my family alone. Yeah. yeah. Leave my family alone. Yeah. It's a damn right. good one. It was on my cutting room floor, Zach. You'll be happy to know. All right. Here we go. Uh, let's see. My number two. It's not quite someone murdered your entire family. Not quite. But it is someone has caused great harm to someone I love very dearly. Uh -huh. And I'll do anything to save their life. And if you tell me the only way I can save my loved one's life is by procuring massive amounts of diamonds, well then, damn it, everybody's got to chill. It's Mr. Freeze. <laughs> that man and Robin. Cutting and room floor. Way, by not the way, a bad guy. I would I mean I think we've discovered it not a bad guy. But not only am I trying to save my wife, right? You cure but disease. Also, bro, I'm trying to cure a disease, right? Not only am I doing that, but along the way, am I just keeping all this shit to myself? No. no. I'm very generous. I got my homeboys over here. Vivica Fox shows up. Julio might be around. Who knows? Everyone's welcome. Everyone's invited. Mm-hmm. Trying to cure disease. And you know what would happen if he tried to, if he cured that disease somewhere else in the what would happen? cinephobe cinematic universe? What would happen? He'd probably get an A at Harvard. <laughs> in biology 101. I mean, maybe. He might. <laughs> depends. Depends who else is in that it class. It, it I really on, wanted to put Mr. Freeze on. on. I really wanted uh, to put that Mr. Was, Freeze that on. That was the toughest one to keep off my list was Mr. Freeze. And then Freeze. I went and to the tape, was... okay? And what here's happened? Mr. Freeze at his entrance. What are you talking about? Kill them, my young... kill them, destroy everything. Does that sound respectful? Look, man, look. Who? Well, who's he talking about? A... What do you mean? Who's he at, talking about? In the opening scene at the museum when he's trying to steal the gem. Oh, look, people who steal artifacts for a living? Number one. Number two, saying kill them is not disrespectful. If you say kill those pieces of shit, 
That's disrespectful. Disrespectful. He, he did it gentlemanly like. Just mm-hmm. kill them. Kill them. Kill them all. Kill them all. <laughs> My condition has left me cold to your pleas of mercy. He's that's disrespectful. A very, that's a very polite not, way of saying not, I'm not going to. Please, please. Like, is he going to say, shut up, broad? He didn't say that. He said, no. my condition. Now we're shaming someone because they've been thrown into a vat of ice that has changed their composition. But also, Zach, his etiquette, like, he's he's literally apologizing. He's like, sorry, see, I've yeah. got this condition. My bad. I, the more you talk, Baze, the more respectful he's becoming in my eyes. I mean, okay. I, I might have to bump him up on my list to put him on the list now. Like I said, because I really, how much I respect really is being thrown to. around. He he seemed like a no brainer <laughs> to me on paper because we know his his tortured backstory. But I, I think his actions not I, the best. But it's okay. I I love Mister Freeze. You know what? Put him number five for me. Drop Coglin down to OLI. Horny lady from Lawnmower Man. OLI wow. to me off the list. Wow. What? Yeah. The horny lady, you got to get her up out of here, man. She's, <laughs> there's nothing. She didn't have sex no, with him until he was, you know, she different. She didn't know. I don't agree. She, <laughs> do you think she found out he's been smarter now, so now I can have sex with him? Coast is clear. There's what brain on the field. The Play ball. Guys, age. <laughs> By the way, well, well, I love that sound effect at the end. <laughs> the man just wanted to get some puns off. Nothing more special. Yeah, well, than we're that. gonna shame him for 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 punnery. We're no, certainly not gonna do that. We're certainly not gonna do that. All right, my number two is being good at business a crime? No, no, not at all. It's if you're the presented as the villain of a story because. The heroes of the movie didn't read the fine print, didn't get a contract signed. That's on them. Shook some hands and thought that they were good to go and got screwed out of a deal because the person they were dealing with is savvy, smart. Also, they were just too busy chasing after hot, accented pieces of ass. I'm talking, of course, about Christoph Waltz and Horrible Bosses too. Oh, oh, oh. Bert Hansen. I thought you were going to go with Chris Pine. Same, because he well, was he on my list. He is li- actually a piece of shit, because he turns out to be the real villain when he, he shoots he his call- dad. And it's really he like calls- he... Uh, well, his dad's a bad guy. Yeah. I'm saying he's not. I'm saying he's respectful. <laughs> I'm saying that the disrespectful piece of shit son who shot his dad in the chest because <laughs> he-, he didn't get the keys to the company. All right. Now, let's be careful. Now, let's be careful. Let's be Let's be careful. On this word, so I'm going to enunciate. Nicholas? No. <laughs> no. I doesn't he? Nicholas, I... <laughs> doesn't he renege on a deal with an with a with an independent company? Well, he doesn't. Well, first it's of not all, illegal. I love yeah. Nicholas. It's I... not respectful. Oh, all right. <laughs> Second of all, now. he. He made this deal. The the company that he is we need exploiting. way more Seagal. We need way more Seagal the rest of the year. <laughs> way more. On its way. Oh, my God. Daisy Chain, Daisy Chain incoming. <laughs> Kurt, Dale, and Nick. Why do you enunciate it slowly if you don't have it in, that, in the right order? Are the ones who didn't do their homework. They, they blew it. They didn't get it written down. They didn't get it in... And paper, they didn't have a lawyer. They didn't Chris call a Pine, lawyer. Chris Pine bought them snacks. Zach, uh, I'm going to side with Maze because I, I, now I remember when they're on the golf course, Chris Pine says, yeah, we fucked him in the ass. And his father slaps him and he says, we don't showboat. It's MTV generation. Mm-hmm, sure. You have to have respect for your he, opponent. He also doesn't say we fucked him in the ass. He says, you just got <laughs> fucked royally. Nothing about the ass. ass. Yeah. <laughs> Where do you, how do you how how would you fuck Nick Curtindale royally, Zach? In the mouth, okay. upside down. <laughs> I think he's that? cutthroat. I think he's you know devious, but I think he's respectful. I think he respects Chris, business. Chris he Pine, respects the game. Chris Pine calls Kurt Curdy, little nickname, you know, because they're so respectful and such buds. But he did say he, got he even gave them royally. the out. That's- even no, gave them the that, out of like, look, if you don't love this plan. The the, he, the kidnapping and the whole ransom thing is Chris Pine's idea. And then he betrays them and tries it to. Was their, it was 
motherfucker Jones idea. Yeah, actually, it was motherfucker Jones but idea. Then he, that, but the they kidnapped. executed it so poorly that then Chris okay, Pine now, now turns now it Zach, into his now idea. Now, <laughs> Zach's pulling me over back over here. Hold on. <laughs> I mean, it's just Jason Sudeikis in this movie. We're like, oh, yeah, that's a good point. I don't know. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Zach, you're number one. Somehow beating out Grandpa Logia. The most respectful, the most respectful, quote unquote, villain mm-hmm. in cinephobe history. Mm-hmm. It's a throwback. And guys, I don't need to set this up at all. I'll just play the intro music. It's so divorced. I guess we're going to have to clip it in because we can't hear it. I heard like two chords and I just heard that. <laughs> it is Ryan McCarthy. Never back down. This kid just wants to fight. He's an MMA head. This kid's just trying to make it. His dad's a fucking creep. Yeah, oh, he's going to move fault. it on his girl. And all of a sudden he's the villain. Uh, I'm, I'm with I'm you that it's his dad. He didn't fault. kill his dad by letting him drive drunk. That's true. Okay. Okay. I, Ryan yeah, McCarthy, room, by far room, the most respectful "quote unquote" villain, cutting room floor for in me in cinephobe history. He's actually, I think, the one of the first names I put on my list. Zach, to be honest, he was the first, literally the first one I thought of when when we talked about it the other day on the rewatchington. First person I thought of. He was always number one on my list. Doesn't he? Really? Doesn't he tap out or like he disqualifies himself from the main competition so that he can go fight yeah. the guy outside? Yeah, yeah, because yeah, because like, that's the like, fight that was supposed yeah. to happen. Like he yeah. he honors the he, like he yeah. says I don't care yeah. about the trophies or the glory or the fame. Right, I, yeah. I want to fight him. No, he's I want about the fight. fight. He's about the spirit yeah. of the fight. Yeah, he respects. Yeah. He the respects. Fight. He respects Look, fighting. Zach, you know what? He was on the cutting room floor for me, and while he won't move up on my list, I do respect the logic behind your pick. Mm-hmm. I also, my number one, is someone who respects the fight and respects the opponent. And then there's someone Brax? that, not quite Brax. Not you have to remind Brax. him where, where Brax is from because he does not remember that he's yeah, from Jiu-Jitsu already. I, I, just like, Brax, I was thinking about Brax from fucking Space Ghost Coast to Coast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the joke we made in that podcast a lot. <laughs> I like when I independently come up with the same yeah. joke that, we, that I came up with. I love it's listening true. to an episode. I don't remember anything that's said. I'm like, oh, this would be. F- oh, I just said that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's Surprise the yourself. That's, when you self same no too. Yep. Oh, there's nothing like it. Oh, it's the best. There's a pride of like, oh, fuck. I'm yeah. good. Like, <laughs> all right. So respects the fight, respects the opponent, respects sometimes some opponents aren't going to be as competitive. So what do you do? Do you kill them? No, you don't kill them. You don't kill them. You toy with them a little bit. You know, it's like playing with your little brother. It's a sign. It's, it's a love and a respect and an admiration. And when you do beat them, you hold up an artifact of theirs in honor of them. Oh, showing the crowd. Look, this is, this means something. This means something to you people. Yeah. It's Bolo and Bloodsport. Yeah. Chun Li. <laughs> yeah. That's so disrespectful. No. No, it's not. no, no way. No you know what? Because you know what it is? You know what it is? Hey, uh, Frank Dukes, in case you need it later, I've got your friend's little bandana here. I have it. It didn't go like you, you think it's lost somewhere? No, no, no. I got it. Yo, uh, the the best way I could put it, Maze, is uh, I believe it was the <clears throat> late 20th century, early 21st century bard, Sean Carter, who once said, don't worry about it. I continue to flame. Therefore, a world with amnesia won't forget your name. Mm-hmm. That's what Bolo was doing. He was making sure these people, they're just like. Great, they're drunk off the hype. Hey, mm-hmm. this was a great fighter. And before I start the next fight, I'm gonna remind you guys. Remember, I fought. I beat this great fighter. Name? Like, let's yeah, Ray, yeah, yeah. Ray Jackson. You Ray break Jackson, my yeah. record. Now I break <clears throat> you like I break your friend. That's respectful. It's respectful. It's it's the whole Larry Bird trash talk. I'm gonna tell you what yes. I'm about to do. Yeah. Now you have a Which chance. Is to stop highly it. disrespectful. Larry no, Bird. it's I very be- respectful because it's I, no. now you have a chance to stop it. Yeah. Otherwise, you don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah. Okay. 
Right. And, he, and it's and a nice I, reminder, way, like, hey, this is what you're fighting for, Frank. Re- remember when I broke your friend? Well, now you've got a little extra on top of it. Throws, Let's be throws respectful powder of the fight. into JCVD's eyes. Uh, also, by the way, oh, uh, known cokehead Frank Dukes, <laughs> world record for most day. coke consumed in Com- seven co- seconds co- or confirmed. less. We met we met someone we- in Hawaii who used to who used to train with the real Frank Dukes. It's <laughs> and he's a, he, and his he, dojo. Confirmed, he confirmed every single everything. story, <laughs> everything. everything. Uh, but also, I want to say one thing: you guys on this podcast, you're always big on accountability. I mean, has no accountability, whatever. What does Bolo do? He takes accountability. Like, I Absolutely. broke your friend. Yeah. I did that. Yeah, it'd be nice if you learned from that. Well, we can't all be Bolo. Well, yeah. May no, one, one. no one can be Bolo. My number one ancient being from a bygone, much more respectful era. It was way more respectful where he came from. But he appreciates modern developments. He respects them. Like the word motherfucker. In fact, you might say that he likes that. He it's likes Drake it. <laughs> from Blade Trinity. There's no way I could have no. ever thought of that. Man. Absolutely not. Who says they don't know anything about honor or living by the sword. Not like you and I do, Blade. Not like us. He was trying to commit genocide, wasn't he? No, he was actually used by Parker Posey. She was. She's the one. She's the disrespectful villain. She's trying to bend Drake to her own devices. That's not respectful. No. And he, he tells, can't stop himself from killing people? He tells <clears throat> Blade, you fought with honor. I respect that. He respects Blade. What could be more respectful? Drake. So many things. Than saying I respect playing Soldier Boy. <laughs> Travis Parker remix. That's he more respectful. Respect <laughs> Cutting room floor. Burt Reynolds and Driven. He was just trying to win. He's the villain? They they try to make him the villain. I don't know about that. But they made no host oh, you, you, it, you, it, you think it's the woman? Yeah. No, Gina? Hell no. Not Gina, the other woman. Oh, the reporter. Yeah, the no, the media no, voice. No, no, <laughs> There's the, another the, woman? The ex-fiance of No Ho's Bow. <laughs> I like frogs. Oh, ribbit, ribbit. That lady. Planet of the Apes. <laughs> yeah, Planet of the Apes. Gotta, gotta use her name, Zach. I don't know the fuck. <laughs> Planet, name, Planet of the Apes. We Stella Warren. <laughs> All right, I, I've got a couple of categories. Uh, I found out that there's two major categories and then everything else kind of like is potpourri. One category is you fuck with someone I love. The other category is you fuck with my money. Mm-hmm. Right? And so I'm going to start with you fuck with my money. I'm just doing me. You came into my world to fuck with my money. Jack Balance from Tango and Cash. He's yeah, so I thought disrespectful. About him. Yep. He's not. I don't know. He, he kind of res- he kind of respects Tago and and Cash for for waltzing he's, away with his drugs. He's impressed. He's yeah, annoyed, he, he but he's impressed. Yeah, but he doesn't curse them out like, "Oh damn you!" It's like, "Wow, Gabriel Cash, look at these guys. They're yeah. doing it again." How many millions? Because he How because he million? watches tape. You guys are he's respectful. Yeah. He respects them. He like, he'll be like these. He doesn't say these motherfuckers or whatever. Zach. He doesn't like 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 oh these guys. He's like yeah. He's at he's admiring. Their effectiveness. I don't know if that's true. I don't Ray know if that's Tango. true. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> well, it's, it's also my cutting room floor, so. He was actually he was actually on the list, and then he got bumped down. What was it that bumped him down? Oh, it was the Asteroid. Asteroid from Armageddon. Asteroid's a like, great oh. call. That's yeah. a great call. Another fucks with my money. Yeah. Samson from Half-Baked. Oh, yes. I'm I'm just this regular drug dealer yeah. selling drugs. Independent business. delivery service. Everybody loves weed. Every it's not hurting anybody. Right. And here come these guys upending and disrupting what was a very delicate ecosystem. Mm-hmm. And yeah. all he did was he was I want to talk to Mr. Nice Guy. What do they do? They lie and then they bring cops. Yep. Yeah. No, completely completely in the right there. He um had, he had they would play music. He had the 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 broads playing like yep. the harp and stuff. It was a very classy environment. I don't think she's a villain in every single movie, but they tried to make her villainous in both Driven and in Showgirls. Gina Gershon, you can't tell me she's not... (laughs) Like, you start coming for... All right, you start trying to ruin her marriage. You start trying to ruin her job as a showgirl. Like, I'm sorry. She didn't do anything wrong here. She's just... what Everything she worked so hard to become, she's just trying to keep that in line. 
Yeah, so Gina Gershon and Showgirls would be my first bucket, which is you're fucking with my money. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll get to the fucking with someone I love later. Yeah. But uh, if I, like, my <clears throat> prospects of being respected in my industry can go astronomically high mm -hmm. if, I'm, if I just do what I do, um, it's not personal we're right. just competing right i'm not cheating right then why is anyone mad at me and by the way i'm not going around getting drunk mm -mm. getting duis mm -mm. fucking staff members from other teams right no it's uh wolf the dentist from d2 oh. all he does is coach <laughs> hockey all he does is coach hockey yeah keeps it respectful um this guy is someone who wants people to get paid to get laid. He wants to disrupt a bad system. Gabriel from Swordfish. Oh, what did yeah. he do wrong? He he sat on uh, Sidney Lumet, which, Ooh. you know, that's one of the great filmmakers. What, Sidney Lumet, the director of Dog oh. Day Afternoon. Yeah, it's a dribble. You know? <laughs> it's a dribble. Yeah. Gabriel from Swordfish. That's a, that's a respectful villain. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I want you to get your dick sucked while you hack this thing. Oh, well, sorry. Also, I want us all to get paid, you know, while these giant banks just fuck he, with he, the economy. But he did disrespect <clears throat> one of the greats of cinema history. So, I mean, I if know. you think that's I mean, a, one of the greats, sure. Sidney Lumet is. Mace. A lot of people think Christopher Nolan's one of the greats. He's not. I, th I thought about Gabriel from Swordfish. He, when he kills that senator, that's pretty disrespectful, though. Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. The, then, the senator that lies on the history? take. And then lies well, about a, history. Makes as far up history. as we know, maybe he knows something we don't. Maybe it's an alternate universe. <laughs> uh, but before I put Claude in there, I bumped out Skeletor from Masters of the Universe. Oh uh, yeah, I really yeah, thought I about surprised. Skeletor. He was when a little were, disrespectful to women. When you were describing Brax, I thought you were describing Skeletor. The the thing that, that Skeletor finish. respects is power. He respects yeah. power. He doesn't. You know, he doesn't want to kill He-Man. He respects the people of Eternia, all eight of them, because he doesn't want to turn them against him. Right. You can't but afford to have eight people he, come at you. Once he gets the power, he gets wildly disrespectful. So he, yeah, that's true. That goes the complete yeah. other way. <clears throat> yeah. Now, Zach, you talked about Gabriel wanting people to have things and to get their dick sucked and all that. And, like, how is that disrespectful? I've got someone else who also wanted the people around him to have things and get their dick sucked and all that stuff. And Give me more. he was just trying to make do. He was trying to make do. He didn't have at all times, all the resources to pay everybody cash. So he'd make do with what he could. It's Sultan from great white hype. All on my list. Yeah. Mm. Although I don't like the way that I don't like the way you treat schoolgirls or girl scouts, whatever well, <laughs> those, those, those photos were not meant yeah. for public consumption. Um, uh, Look, this guy ended up being dishonest, which you could say is disrespectful. But he found himself in a situation. He tried to get out of it while making the best of it for everybody. Ben Stiller and Heartbreak Kid. I had him on my own. Oh, oh, no. no. He's, I, he's, he's, no. He, although, uh, he's Mace, just, too, Mace, he's just Mace, disrespectful enough to not make it, but he's, Mace, he's worth Mace. mentioning. I, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> going to get into detail because he's in my other bucket. My other bucket. My mm -hmm. people I love luck bucket. All right. Um. Again, from the you fuck with my money bucket. I had a whole plan. The hit happens. We get the diamonds. We get out of here. Next thing I know, this wise talking car wash ticket sales guy and this local news guy are all up in my shit. All I want to know is, well, I'm at diamonds. I don't even know what his name is. I know his buddy was named Debray. It's the bad guy from Money Talks. Frenchie. <laughs> Frenchie McFrench person. Yeah. Uh, this guy's classy. That's that's why he's on the list. I think he probably is disrespectful, which is why I didn't make it. The Rumble. Darius Emanuel. Gross. On my list there. as well. Yeah. On my I list as well. My, yeah. Couldn't make the my argument. Friend. Couldn't figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you talked about the, the asteroid and Armageddon just existing. Mm -hmm. You know what else just mm -hmm. existed? The hurricane and Hurricane Heist. Yep. Oh, oh fuck, wow. it's just existing. You know? Build better structures that you don't want it to get ruined. 
Now, it's funny, Zach, because I have a third bucket, is, which is inanimate objects, and Event Horizon is on that list. Oh, oh. yeah. Yeah. yeah I like, just look, it was just existing. Man, well, the hurricane's not an board. inanimate object because it's got a face. Well, got it. That's true. Yeah. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Back to my you mess with my money bucket. Again, I'm a local businessman. The All the local industry depends on me. I, we got a good thing going in this town. This guy gets hired as a bouncer. All of a sudden, he's fucking with my shit? What's that about? Mind your business. Hey, but why'd you, but you kick out the drunks and just keep, make sure you're IDing people above age and leave me the hell alone? It's Brad Wesley. Yep. From On my list as well. Yeah. Highly disrespectful villain. Highly disrespectful. Well, because he hits, he hits a woman, yes. That, and that's he, what kept him off my list. Hits a woman, runs a runs a monster truck through a car dealership just because. Yeah, send a message. Burns send down him. my man's. Pay like, your bills. What is they it? Hardware look. store, or whatever the fuck he's Maze, got. Auto repair but, shop. Before he did all that, what did he do? Try to make he deals. He called Patrick Swayze into his house, face to face, man to man, spoke to him, didn't raise his voice, didn't threaten him, just was straightforward with him. And what did Patrick Swayze do? He spit his, his nose at him. Yeah. yeah. Disrespectful. Disrespectful. Oh, disrespectful, disrespectful heroes. heroes. That's yeah. a good list. Oh, yes. Next the time. Counters. Yes. Yes. The, the honey cult from the Wicker Man. Oh, uh, they're, 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 they're just running Yeah, they're just running a business. On. Yeah, they're come a on. a bunch of broads, man. Oh. A bunch of crazy you, broads. You want to talk about a disrespectful hero? Fucking Nick Cage coming in there, <laughs> yeah. punching, punching broads left and right. Let's be respectful. Okay? Out of let's his jurisdiction. This guy's just trying to find his daughter. All right. <laughs> Was he? I don't know. I don't remember. Disrespectful <laughs> heroes. <laughs> How many Nick Cage disrespectful heroes can we get on the oh list? Oh my god! <laughs> All Snake of Eyes, like it's yeah, it's a lot Primal. of Primal. Oh, we got to rewatch that. Um, <clears throat> Jiu Jitsu Re Washington. I'm ultimately you. left off my list, uh, but this guy's just like, look, he's he's a massive fan. He loves what he loves, but he did abandon his child to go make a knife sale. Is Robert De Niro in the fan? Yeah. I had I had him I had him on there. Yeah. I couldn't figure out what bucket to put him in. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We we said Christoph Waltz, Bert Hansen. We said. Did we say? Oh no, we didn't say this one. Yeah. All right. So let's say you had this whole deal planned out with a guy. You haven't seen the guy. Mm -hmm. You meet this guy. Guy claims to be the guy, con uh, proceeds to concoct this horseshit plan, fucks my sister, oh. and fucks my plan to get rich off of this. It's Gary Sinise from Reindeer Games. I think mm. he was very, very patient. <clears throat> yeah, he was very patient. With goddamn Ben Affleck. Yeah, Ben Affleck's out here playing Reindeer Games after he asked him not yeah. to. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's fucked up. Um, look, I think it's well established that as a country, as a society, we have ruined environments, right? We have, we have encroached on the, the natural habitat of many a creature. So I'm sorry when you come into my space and I try to fight you to get, get you away because you've broken into my territory, the bear in Hercules in New York, very <laughs> respectful, <laughs> Very respectful. Respe Could have respect mauled him. Hands. Could have mauled him. Said no. <laughs> nope. Let's box. I'll fight you. I, yeah. I'll fight you. Your style. <laughs> yeah. That is I'll, I'll, I'll adjust to you. You know what? <laughs> I'll sheath my claws. <laughs> Second OLI. Bump the horny what? lady. What? The oh. bear's there. Stalk myself into him. <laughs> wow, you, you bumped Mrs. Burke and Meredith Johnson right off. Yep. Your list, huh? Misogynist. Oh, now I'm, I was a misogynist for having him on. I'm a misogynist for having and him I, off. That's how it works. It's like, it's like, <laughs> that's how it works with the mean. Se sexual harassment. Like, oh, well now, well now we got to fire him. Well, now you can't fire him because it's, see, oh. that's also sexual harassment. What are we even doing this for? <laughs> oh, man. Here, okay. Um, someone doing your job. Is doing your job wrong? No. Look, especially if there's all sorts of violations and code breaks mm -hmm. that are happening. Actually, me not doing my job would be disrespectful to right. the position, disrespectful to the people, and trust me, Agreed. it's Kevin Spacey as Clyde in Fre Fred Claus. Is that his job? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is the fuck like, of Christmas? 
Good, good at business. Fucking Christmas. <laughs> um, I wanted, I wanted to put Ramses from Nacho Libre, but he's he's disrespectful. Yeah, he was disrespectful for sure. Uh, look, he's not the best guy, which kept him off the list. This dude's just trying to accomplish things and rid the world of deadly killers. Paul Cerrone. No. Anaconda. <laughs> no. Highly disrespectful. He's a leerer. He leers. That's not respectful, but you know, they're just trying to kill some snakes. I, I mean, that's my number one villain, so I can't, I can't follow you down that road. <laughs> that's my boy, but he's not respectful, and that's why I love him. Sometimes criminals have a plan, have a plot, like I said, we've been talking about. They're not trying to hurt anybody. They just want the money or the jewels mm-hmm. or whatever it is. Sometimes these criminals are beautiful women. This is, I know where this is going. God damn it. Why? What? Why do y'all hate this movie so much? Because it I sucks. It's no, not man. good. You picked it just for the opening scene. I, Which also I, is not good. <laughs> no, the opening scene is amazing. That movie is amazing. And yes. What's her name? Fuck, why am I drawing a blank? Giselle. Don't help him. Don't help Giselle him. Giselle Bunchen. Damn it. Giselle Bunch in a If we were at an hour and 16 minutes, I wouldn't have helped yeah. him. But yeah. Also, I also. I love Nicholas, all right? Oh. I sure do. Also, oh. uh, along, along, along with Giselle, also fits the same description. It's the hot woman bank robber from See No Evil, Hear No, Hear no Evil. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Just trying to get the job done. Meanwhile, here's horny Gene Wilder with his heart on. I don't really remember what he did, but I kind of feel like he was just trying to live in a way hey, that. Algae rhythm. Space Jam. Oh. But I don't really yeah. remember the mo- the movie enough to put him on the list. Spaghetti lasagna for me from Smoking Aces. He literally just wanted to live. Yeah, that's yeah, all he was trying to do. Plan. Yeah. If the villain uh, gives you very clear rules and you break those rules, it's kind of on you. Agreed. Don't think it, don't say it. The bye-bye man. Very respectful. That's all you got to do. Just not think yep. about him, not say his name. Don't think it, don't say it. Done. Yeah. Problem point. solved. No point. movie. In that same in that same vein, you know, you get Ten Commandments given. No one pays attention to any of them. We just fuck around, do whatever. God from Legion. <laughs> Easy rules. Easy rules. Easy rules. No one wanted to listen. Yeah. Um, this guy just wanted to show up to work and not let his country down. Drago. Yeah, oh, he, I thought about Drago. I thought on about Drago. List. On my list. Yeah, because the real yeah. villain is the USSR and yeah, absolutely. putting him in that yeah, position well, and stuff. Amin will tell you who the real villain is. No, the real villain is Adrian. Broad. <laughs> oh, yes. She's very, very disrespectful. She was my number one villain. If yeah. you also, Broad Nielsen. <laughs> uh, no, Bro- okay. no, she's just supporting her man. She's supporting her man, although she does cheat She's pretty on disrespectful. Him the, hyping him up. Creed 2. In Creed 2, oh, she, yeah. she ends up that was like, after. leaving him. Yeah. All right. Uh, we've gotten to the end of my very, very large bucket of you've messed with my money. Back to messing with people I love. I'm going to start with Eddie Cantro and the Heartbreak Kid. Mm-hmm. Maze, the heart wants what a heart wants. And he didn't want to be like, hey, shut up, uh, 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 Millen Ackerman. I don't want to be with you anymore. You're annoying. He doesn't do any of that stuff. He tries to let her down easy. That's someone who respects her feelings, just like he respects the feelings of the Moynihan uh, broad that that's not the one that Tom Brady knocked up, right? No, Michelle no, Monaghan, not Bridget Moynihan. Moynihan Monaghan. There you go. Yeah. Anyway, he, he, he's respecting everyone's feelings. And you know what, man? People are just getting in the way of his love. And that's not cool. That's not Eddie true. Cantrell. Horrible spouse. My one of my CT five worst spouse. spouses. He's multiple time spouse. He's married multiple times. Yeah. In that movie alone. Nah. And nah. CT five nah. liar for sure. <laughs> he'll he'll be he'll be well remembered on the CT five liar. Not respectful. Forrest Whitaker and Street Kings. He gave Keanu He's multiple options to get out. Wildly disrespectful. What are you talking about? <laughs> He is one of the most disrespectful characters we've ever had. To Hugh Laurie. In that one scene to Dr. House. I mean, I don't know. I don't uh, know. The, the reason why we're doing this list, Clinch Leatherwood. Yeah. Rome, no. 
freaking what's his name stole his woman. Yeah, you, 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 you kiss my woman and think nothing's gonna come of it. Come on, man. Shoots on two though. Well, nah. shoot shoot on one. Nah. Um, this guy's a businessman. This guy's just trying to bring something to the city he loves. He's uh, he's giving opportunities to people who normally wouldn't get those opportunities. I'm talking about Wild Bill, owner of the Knicks, Eddie. Oh yeah, I I, I looked at that one. I was like, Zach's got this one. Yeah. All right, uh, I want to run through a couple of these rather yeah. quickly because they're all the same thing. It's like <clears> you <throat> mess with someone that I care about, right? Ryan McCarthy had never backed down, right? Toothpick and don't be a menace. Mm-hmm. That Shiki was his. That's his baby yeah. mom. All of a Absolutely. sudden, ashtrays over there, right? Uh, LeBron James is Space Jam. Messing with my son. My the, son. Uh, See the villain. <laughs> yeah. It, I, I, why was Space Jam made, Zach? <laughs> There you go. You have your answer. Emil Kovacs in Killing Season. Whole Revenge. family died. Yeah, Revenge. you killed my yeah. family. My family, my loved ones. Uh, the broad wife in Disclosure. Hey, you slept She's with my man. She's not a villain. She's not well, a villain. Mm, agree to disagree on that one. What? Peter Pan and Hook stole my son. She literally just supports her husband after he cheated on her. We've moved on, Zach. We're on to Peter Pan right. and Hook. Right, so, he just so stole my son. Right, uh, we said the father-in-law from over the top, and what's the last one here? Oh, Zod from Batman versus Superman. Just trying to save my race. This man, my race. This man suffers multiple hate crimes. They're mad at him because he wanted to be respectful and go sleep around without cheating on his girlfriend. I'm talking about Mike Dexter. Can't hardly wait, <laughs> dude. I struggle. Oh man, that's <laughs> all I could think of. Come Every on. time I was like, "Yo, he all he wanted to do was like, no, nah, man, I can't, I can't go also, down that." You know, I love, you know, I love Mike Dexter, but no, nah, he's man. the hero. We've established that. Preston right. Byers is the villain. That's right. So. That's right. This this one, he he gave us the drop. Now everybody, be very respectful. Then the Shavante observing report. <laughs> He's respectful of over. Ronnie. Yeah, that's true. He's not Say, respectful of them all. In the same vein as uh, the bear in Hercules in New York, you're going to come mm-hmm. into my area and try to steal my shit? No. We're getting you the hell up out of here. It's the gray gorillas, Congo. Yep. Oh, I, I thought about them as well. All right, last one on my <clears> list <throat> here. Or last two, I should say. One is my sweet brother Numsi from Golden Child. He was wildly disrespectful. No, he was always respectful. <laughs> he was doing he was doing some villainous shit. I'm not saying he was a good guy. He's a bad guy, really bad guy. Is he trying to murder a child? Yeah, but he was doing respect. All right, I'm in. There was not a lot, not a lot of showboating there. <laughs> and then the other one is Ricky Gervais, an invention of lying. He literally is created he lying so he could so he could let people. Do so it. I thought about Rob lying. Lowe. Wait, he hold on. He invented lying. What? What more? To, what, so that he this, could so that he could stay housed. Again, it's disrespectful not to pay your rent. But he couldn't he help it. He kept kept getting fired. Well, you know what, man? That's life. But again, invented lying, which makes him respectful because it lets people down easy, but makes him a villain. He Rob Lowe lying. is a good one though because. He, He's, All he did was tell the truth. He's so honest. Like, yeah. it's honesty and respect are kind of like yeah. running parallel in that one. Uh, I just have two left on my list. Um, This guy, well, all right. I know you guys will jump on me for this wording. This guy was just yep. following orders, but he was doing so oh, in order Jesus to Christ. in order to it's protect his Who loved ones. List? <laughs> no, protect his loved ones yeah, as Candace. this horrible being was trying to just literally eat planets. It's Silver Surfer. Fantastic Four. Yeah, I don't he's think he's a villain. villain. They make him as the villain in the movie. Mm, like the first thir- first act, but like first we half. realized very quickly. Easy. He's he's a pawn in a greater scheme. In that and then my last one, Galactus. these dudes are just protecting the family. They want their rightful recipes that were stolen by a whore. Mm-hmm. And they're just trying to compete in some friendly drinking competition. It's the Germans yeah. in Beer yeah. Fest. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yes. but they're so disrespectful in the yeah. competition. <laughs> 
What? How? Oh, oh, what? Yeah. <laughs> Massive shit talkers. Are you kidding me? Yeah. They do. <laughs> throw, what kept them off the list? One shit talking that builds competition, builds for the audience. It's very respectful in, in creating entertainment. The one thing they do is they do throw out some anti-Semitic stuff. That's what kept them off the list. The, these are the names that were off my even cutting room floor because they, I realized just Not respectful. disrespectful. Yeah. Yeah. At all. Jack Warden and Carvin Coffee. Oh, super disrespectful. Oh my God. Yeah. Yep. Peter Peter Dante and the water boy. <laughs> yes. Captain Ahab and League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. <laughs> I don't remember it at all. Disrespectful. <laughs> Captain, of a bitch. Captain Ahab, Captain Nemo. Captain Nemo, my bad, Captain Nemo. Yes. Who is on your who's on your villains list? Yes, he is. All right. All right. Well, man, respectful villains. Yeah, who would have thunk it? Send us your respectful Great villains. Topic. Send us your disrespectful hoops. heroes. At no, Darth no, 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 no. Save that for no, next no, week. No, 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 no. At Talk Hoops, at Darth Me, at Corn Puzzle, at Simple Pod, at Count the Dings. Subscribe to the Patreon, patreoncom slash Count the Dings. Get all the extra stuff. We have so many cold open. You heard a little bit of the wedding. You not even half of it. Dude, you need to get up. On you that get it shit. all from the re Washington, from the the uh, unedited cold opens, right? Mm-hmm. Extended. extended cold opens plus and this podcast you want you want to know all the the tales of the wedding of the and i in hawaii it's like it's like the marvel cinematic universe you have to yeah. watch all the shit to you get gotta the watch whole it story. all patreon.com slash count the dicks next time we make love you introduce me to jade